Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from CA Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Classic Live Album War. Sitting in the guest chair over here, we've got Chris Allo once again thanks here to talk me. about two. Thanks for coming. We love having you on the show. We've got a lot of folks out there who love having Chris oh, guest you. host on our too show kind, here. Too kind. Uh, it's, we make a good team, Chris. We make a good team. Absolutely. Uh, so as we discussed in our last episode, uh, Chris and I mapped out a bunch of really cool live album battles here that we're going to jump right into the next one so this one we've got two uh releases from the late 70s what do we got 77 78 i believe if i'm not mistaken yeah i believe so okay so the first one richie blackmore's rainbow on stage of course featuring the classic lineup including ronnie james dio cozy powell jimmy bain and uh, mr planet p himself tony carey on the other end of the ring, Scorpions Tokyo Tapes. A lot of glare there. There we go. Uh, one of the top Absolutely. hard rock live albums of that of era. Time. Yeah, of all time. Uh, with the last appearance yep, in the uh, band officially. Of Uli John Roth. Uli yeah, John he, Roth. he had already put in his notice when um, when they uh, they kept him in. You know, They convinced him for to stay tour, for, yeah. the, for that tour. How weird is it, and I hate to kind of divert up from the topic a little bit, but how weird is it whenever something like that happens? I look back to Deep Purple, too. Blackmore had, had decided he was going to leave to form Rainbow. It's kind of tied into this. and But he agrees to finish out the rest of the European tour with Purple. And yet that tour, and is recorded in the Made in Europe album and a lot of subsequent other live albums, some of their best performances oh, ever, yeah. Amazing. including from him. Right before he leaves to go right. on to another band. And it's no different here. This is some of Uli's best playing ever. Oh, yeah. Ever. I, I love it. Love it. That is just a, a, an amazing record. Amazing performances. Um, yeah. I, I love the record. So let's start off with uh, Rainbow on stage. All right. Again, I remember having the, the LP back in the day. Yep. That's and true. It's hard to beat that. I mean, come on. Great stuff there. You got uh, you know photos all over the place. Uh, a really really cool live album, I thought, uh, and I still think I still listen to this a lot to this day. And I think for me, there's a couple of versions of songs on here which have become kind of definitive. Like I think uh, "Man on the Silver Mountain" for me doesn't get any better than on this album. Agreed. I always prefer the the live version and "Kill the King." Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, fantastic. Uh, "Catch the Rainbow" on here kills. Yeah. Uh, but then you got some stuff that, like, you know, the the long bluesy thing. Great guitar solo from from Blackmore, though. And then you got Starstruck, right, which is really cool on here. Uh, Mistreated is damn good on I here. I was just going to say, I mean, I, I love my favorite pur Purple record is the Burn record, and I love Ronnie's cover <laughs> of uh, of Mistreated. It's awesome. Right. It's funny because, you know, Whitesnake would play that song as well, and you go to the Whitesnake uh, Live in the Heart of the City album, and there's a damn good version of Mistreated on there as well. So and I remember Dio once, I couldn't believe it, in in the 90s, Dio Live played, that live. played Mistreated. I was like, holy cow. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah, no doubt. It was yeah. it was really cool. But. Yeah. 16th Century Green Sleeves, pretty cool on here. And then you got uh, Still I'm Sad by the Yardbirds, which, really good cover version, I thought. Yes. They did it really well. Um, which... Right has the has Ronnie singing, yeah, and on the album it's instrumental. Yes, if I'm if I'm you're not mistaken, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, so a really good live album. Probably could have been a little longer. I thought for a double album, it's a little bit short of and content. Is, is that was that originally a double record? I, I don't even because I yeah. never had the, the vinyl. Yeah, yeah I, had I only the had the tape. It was a double okay. record, but they could have squeezed some more stuff on here. And you know, oddly enough, there's no Stargazer on here. Right, which is the band's masterpiece. So. Right, and they played it live. Yeah. So you know, but produced, produced by Martin Birch. Who, of course, worked with everybody back in the day, all the heavy hitters. Could, could right? be the greatest metal producer of all time. I mean, that's, uh, I, that's could be debatable. I, I don't know about could be. I think he is. Yeah. In my opinion, anyway. Absolutely. So, um, But a, a sizzling live set. I, I loved it back in the day. I still like it quite a bit. Um, but, of course, this would signal the kind of, uh, basically, almost the end of Ronnie's run in the band. Right. You know, and and it is part. interesting that Kill the King, uh, this was before... Before they released... Uh, before uh, they released uh, Long Live Rock and Roll. Yeah, so within a year after this came out, Ronnie was basically gone from the band yeah. already. So, you know, it's the way it goes. Of course, we know where we went on to next, and that whole story has all sorts of other interesting things right. to discuss, right? Uh, on the other side of the ring, weighing in 195 pounds, the Scorpions, the Scorpions Tokyo, Tokyo tapes. tapes. So, again, this follows a string of stunning studio albums unbelievable unbelievable how how tig man who is who's great 
how he does not listen to the Uli John Roth era of the Scorpions, especially because he's a Scorpions fan, right? Blows my mind because I'm, and granted, there's a lot of people out there. There's that, a lot like, of people that Scorpions don't know that stuff. Didn't exist before Love Drive. Yeah, and I'm one of those guys. One of those guys when I was a kid, the first Scorpions album I ever bought was Blackout. Same here, right? Because so, I saw him on a tour opening up for these guys on the Straight Between the Eyes tour, and I was like, "Holy crap, they are amazing!" Right? And you know, of course, I had Blackout at the time, and then I went and I got um, Love Drive and the one right after, which Animal is Magnetism. Animal Magnetism. And I was like, "Oh, this stuff is great!" But then I happened to see in the stores Virgin Killer, of course, with the U.S. album right. cover. Then and I was Scorpions like, did have some crazy album covers, right. and I was like, "Oh, that's I." I never heard of that one, so I went and bought that, and I was like, "This is completely different." Oh yeah, and so and that, that guitar playing, I was like, "What the hell?" And I actually then went and bought this before I got in trance and uh, taken by force and uh, fly to the rainbow and lonesome crow, blah 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 blah. But I mean, this stuff is so different than what the more commercial. 80s version of the Scorpions oh. is. And, and yeah, you're absolutely right. No offense to Tigman, of course, but there's a lot of people there's out a, there yeah. who just really never got into the pre Love Drive stuff. Or, and there's a lot of people who probably have not even listened to anything pre Blackout. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you, you know, compare, you know, Pictured Life to Tease Me, Please Me, and oh. it's like two completely different, different bands. bands. Yeah. Completely but, different uh, you know, bands. and again, to exactly what, what you said, Pete, uh, and, you know, people don't know, you know, pre internet days, you couldn't just say, oh, you know, I feel like hearing this record, or I feel like checking out this band. Let me put it on. Let me pull it up on Spotify. You no, gotta, you got to own if, it. If you wanted to hear the old Scorpions records, you either had to borrow it from somebody you knew, or you had to buy it yourself with money. Yeah, that was it. You had to mow lawns, or babysit, or wash dishes, or whatever. Get some kind of money and go to a record store and buy these albums. And in a lot and of hope you liked it. Yeah, I hope you liked it. And and if you could find it, because right. a lot of these That's old true. Scorpions albums. Were only available as imports, right? It right. wasn't wasn't really until they 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 really broke. Same thing with White Snake, right. where then all the old stuff was you was know available. was available in, in the states, or whatever year. Or in this case, these guys were on what uh, BMG, I think, or whatever. Oh uh, God, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. But and this is the only version, if I'm not mistaken, uh, R- of uh, 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 All Night Long from uh, from Scorpions. They never actually uh, put, which is interesting. That's the opener. On, uh, on never the on a studio album. Yep, never on a and studio a great record. Song. Great song. Uh, and I've seen Uli John Roth solo quite a few times. He still plays that song. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, such great tracks. Way ahead of its time. I Absolutely, one hundred percent. The Scorpions music from this era is so far ahead of its time. I think a lot of people didn't get it. Yep. Uh, not a very American sounding nope. hard rock, right? It's very Teutonic, like they say, right? Very European. Yeah. Um, and- I interviewed Uli John Roth last year for when he he came uh, came to the states, and I brought up the fact of him quitting, you know, because he wanted to do his his Electric Sun solo stuff, and I was like, you which know, which is quite good, which is really good, really great, you know, again, very different, but you know, I brought up the fact that, geez, you know, looking back in hindsight, you know, should you have stayed? Could you have done both bands? And he he admitted he's like, you know. He's like, you know, looking back now, he's like, I, I probably could, I could have, I could have stayed. Maybe I should have stayed. Of course, you know, Who there's, knew, there's right? no going back. Who knew? Nobody they were, knew. They were struggling at the yeah. time. Nobody yeah. knew the Scorpions were going to blow up. And I like, just interviewed Michael Schenker, and he hundred percent takes credit for breaking the Scorpions with the Love Drive record. That's a whole nother story. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, who knew the Scorpions were going to blow up and literally be uh, uh, this huge band, arguably. Until Ramstein came around, the the biggest rock band ever out of out of Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great stuff. So what do we got? Great record. On here? So all night long kicks it off, followed by a pictured life, which is awesome. Out awesome. here. Backstage queen, and again, you've got on here probably some definitive versions of some of these songs, uh, especially Polar Nights. Right. Polar Nights is like Herculean on this, it's with some just mind blowing Roth guitar soloing. Yeah, just incredible stuff. Entrance kills on here. Will burn the sky. Amazing, which Great. they started to do again in the early two thousands, yeah, and yeah, Scorpions back, yeah. still still do, as far as I know. Yeah, Suspender Love in Search which, of the Peace right, of that Mind. Song Suspender, I love that song. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy, but I it's love one it. of their more kind of uh, lighthearted tracks. I right. think from this era, and it really works live. I think 
uh, Fly, Fly to the, the Rainbow, Rainbow on here wow. is just, just like amazing. that whole ending. I used to I used to listen to that song over and over and over again. Just all the Roths, just like you know, whammy bar excursions at the end, and just making all these crazy ass noises. It's almost like you know the spirit of Hendrix oh, was alive in yeah. him, but in a different way. You know I, what I'm I mean, and not to knock Uli John Roth because I love him and I love his guitar playing. But if there ever was a guitar player who was obsessed. With Jimi Hendrix, yeah, uh, I think it, it's Uli John Roth. I mean, he even married, you know, Hendrix's ex-girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, it's Monica Danneman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Crazy. But now imagine, because she was in that hotel the night that Hendrix died right. with him. So imagine the stories oh. that have passed between those two. Got and she's no longer with. And she's no longer with us. Yeah, she tragically passed but, you know, away, and that's a whole. Uli's got that stuff. He, oh yeah, you know. Uh, side two of the uh, the original vinyl is uh, he's, he's a, a woman, woman, she's, she's a, man. a man. <laughs> Great stuff. I mean, oh my God. Speedy's coming. Speedy's coming, which Scorpions did as part of their medley uh, when I saw them uh, with Megadeth at the Garden. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, they did a medley cool. of old 70s material, and the Speedy's coming was in there. So, yeah. Just, How does uh, Mr. Jabs do all the kind of Uli stuff? I, yeah, I mean, he, he did he's it all right. He's a great guitar player, he, but he's he, to, so different. Yes. Though, you know? so different. And they, 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 you know, only they cut it up, so they only did maybe, you know, a minute of Speedy's gotcha, coming. Gotcha, gotcha. Without all the crazy guitar yeah. solo, yeah. But I think that's the, the best version is on here. Uh, Top of the Bill. Is great. Another one that was in their, their medley, from what I remember. And then you got, like, you know, we, we've talked a lot on the show recently about a lot of these 70s hard rockers doing, like, these old 50s classics. Yeah. So then you got Hound Dog, Long Tail, Sally. You know, it's just like, uh. it's 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 incredible that they had, you know, what, uh, five studio records for, for, by this time and that they. Would bother Why? to do two but covers. They weren't the only ones. No, it's true. Uriah Heep was doing yeah. it. Purple did it. I mean, they all did it. Did yeah. Led Zeppelin did it. I mean, it's just you have so much material. It's just very it's like strange. You couldn't squeeze in, you know, uh, another you know, track? something yeah. else, right? You know, uh, what else we got? Steam Rock Fever. Great yep. Dark Lady. Dark Lady, so great. Great on here. Uh, Kojo Nosuki, and then of course ending it all off with Robot Man, right. which is all sorts of energetic and in your face on here. So, um, yeah, so. Here's the deal, guys, right? You know the purpose of the show is just to talk about two really great live albums, what we love about it. I think we both talked about what we love about these. So now we're going to tell you what we may not like about one or which one we prefer. So I'm going to let my guests kind of go first. If you had to choose, Chris, which, um, one, would you, which one would you prefer? Of the two, I still listen to Tokyo Tapes all the time. And I'm going to be completely honest. I never, ever listen to Rainbow on stage. Um, I am not a, uh, a big fan of bands either back then or now that will take a studio recording that's four minutes or five minutes and stretch it out to be 12 minutes long <laughs> with solos and you know jam sessions and to me uh you know i know this is blasphemy for some but to me on stage the while the performances are great of the material it's having to wade through all this extra 70s jam stuff that bands like Deep Purple used to do, which again I, I never listened to uh, Made in Japan ever. I just uh, I just don't like that era. Um, so while the, the you know Kill the King is awesome, uh, you know when anytime I listen to the Rainbow, I'm listening to the studio, studio albums. Yeah, and that's 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 fair enough. That's honest. So there's, there's a lot of people who probably feel that. Yeah. Way. So I of the and I have some of the other. There's multiple Rainbow. Live records, oh, yeah. and as a, as a huge fan, I've picked up quite a few of them. But again, it's the constant jamming that just really turns me off. And I just don't understand. I mentioned it earlier, and I remember talking about it with Ronnie James Dio some of the times I interviewed him. Like, I just don't understand Richie Blackmore's, uh, you know, his, his mindset of, okay, I've got one of the greatest singers in the world, but um, every night I'm going to do 30 minutes of guitar solos. So I don't know how he did that with Ronnie James Dio. But then again, he'd already done it with Glenn Hughes and David Coverdale. And he'd already done it with Ian Gillen. So, so he was used to it. He was used to it. He was used to making his amazing singers. But he changed his tune shortly thereafter. Yes. Right? When All he, of a sudden he wanted to become more commercial. When he more wants songs. A hundred percent. So, um, yeah. So I actually, if I'm going to listen to anything Rainbow Live Records, I'd rather listen to the uh, the Jill and Turner Records because... The jamming is is cut down. So of yeah. these two records, I still listen to Tokyo Tapes all the time. Uli John Roth era is my favorite era of the Scorpions. I've seen Uli solo uh, probably five, six times just to see him play the old Scorpions. I'm going Tokyo Tapes. There you go. Okay, well, 
You guys all know my love for this band and especially for both Ronnie and Richie. Uh, I'm a big fan of this album. However, in most cases, I generally will pick Rainbow over most bands, but this is a powerhouse of a stellar, live album. I, would, I can probably easily say, if not a top five live album of all time for me, it's easily a top ten, and it's probably closer to five than it is to ten. Oh, I, yeah. For me, I would put it in the, five, in the top five. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right up there with, you know... Unleashed in the East. Unleashed in the East. For, for me, live Strangers Evil. in the Night, yep. UFO, oh, and yep. Made in Japan and Purple. You know, I mean, there's there's like certain live albums that are just like, ugh, and this is one of them. So yeah. for me, this, uh, you know, if we're going to do the whole boxing thing, this is probably a spirited fight for about 10 rounds, but I think uh, Scorpions are going to pull off a late KO somewhere before the championship rounds begin. Um, it's just, it's too good. It's just too good. And that's not to say that this isn't, because it is. But I just think that this is a cohesive start to finish. Oh, yeah. With the you know, with the exception of the uh, the, covers, the couple of covers, yeah. You know, other than that, other than that, it's just and there's just so many like definitive versions of some of these studio classics on here. Whereas if you got a couple of them on here, but yeah, as to Chris's point, there's there's a lot of jam and there's a lot of long bluesy passages and things like that. It's still great, but yeah. this is like almost unbeatable. Yeah, so killer live uh, record. So that's, if you're if you're not uh, really into the Uli John Roth era of the Scorpions. That's a really good one to uh, to check out because uh, it's basically amazing greatest performances. Hits live. It's yeah. the greatest hits live from you know the early from career. that era. So, uh, but you you know your opinions may differ. Some of you may favor Rainbow. Uh, you may have some and, Scorpions. And like fans. you always say, there's there's no right or wrong. No, there's no right or wrong. There's no winners or losers here. This is just an excuse to talk about two kick ass live albums. All right, and discuss them, what we love about them, maybe what we don't love about them. Uh, but more importantly, as we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks here, the goal of these classic live album shows is to pair off as many of them as we can. We're gonna do. We're doing polls here on the channel. We're doing polls on Facebook every week. When we get a, you know, one of these, we get a winner. We're gonna send them off to bracket round number two. Ultimately, the goal. Oh, okay. Is, all right. Oh, you didn't know that. I, well, I see. I didn't even know that part. Uh, ultimately, the goal. But they're is, all coming back to. They're all okay. So all the winners of each of these battles are going to come back wow. to fight again, and we're going to eventually find out what you all think is the greatest live album of all time. Okay. So uh, you got any early picks for what you think might be up there in the top? I mean, me personally, maybe I'd say Unleashed in the East, but I don't know if my my thinking is, is correlation to everybody else out there. But there's. You know, at least in the East, it didn't win yet. So, right, it, it hasn't, hasn't started yet. Hasn't started yet. Hasn't started, started, yet, hasn't so, started um, yet. So, you know, we've got so far some of the winners we've got is uh, Thin Lizzy, Live and Dangerous, UFO Strangers in the Night, Deep Purple, Made in Japan, uh, All My Brothers at the Fillmore, you know, oh, that's, yeah. guest songs, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. So, we'll yeah, it's going to be interesting. Double Live Gonzo by Ted Nugent. Uh, we've got, so we've got some great stuff already yeah. in, that we've already done and some winners. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens here. But uh, good luck to both of them. Put your comments in, okay, comments and feedback. Which one do you like better? Which one do you prefer? If you can't decide, you just love them both, just tell us what you love about each one of them. You don't have to vote if you don't want to, right? But it's, it'll help to further along this whole kind of uh, you know, contest thing we've got going on here to determine the actual best live album of all time. So uh, Chris is coming back. Don't go away. Chris, uh, what do you got to tell us about what oh, you've been sure. up to lately? Uh, I, uh, I've been writing the heavy metal column in More Sugar magazine. For um, God, like I think, like long time, fifteen right? years. Wow, uh, the, the column itself is called More Metal. Um, I just do my uh, rant about, uh, and these are all my concert photos: King Diamond, uh, Michael from Opeth, Michael Schenker. Um, I just rant about uh, what's going on in metal, and, yeah. and, and uh, concert appearances in the in the New York area. Because uh, this paper is it's a free paper you can get in the Hudson Valley, New York area. If you can't get it. If you're not local, that's okay. You can read the entire thing at www.moresugar.com. And um, it's great because I just like uh, talking metal. That's what it's all about. So make sure you check that out. And uh, don't go away. Chris will be right back. We'd like to get Chris on here as often as we can when we can Glad get some time away. It. And just so everybody knows, we are still going to do that History of Iron Maiden. Oh, so uh, absolutely. This yeah, summer just, has been, yeah. well, we've both been really busy with all sorts of other things going on, but now that the fall is is here. I had to do research. I had to see Iron Maiden four times this summer. See just, that? He waited. Just, he just did that on purpose. Just to make sure that I still love them. So. <laughs> 
So that is coming, guys. So just thank you for your patience on that. But it'll be well worth the wait, trust me. So, uh, but we got more classic live album wars coming up. So don't touch that dial. Visit us on the web at www.catranquilly.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here every day on YouTube. So make sure to vote for either the Scorpions or Rainbow. Click on that little button up in the upper right hand corner there. Vote for it. You can also go on Facebook and vote as well. So uh, we'll see you guys real soon. Take care.